open it up and get it cleaned up. One screw, screw number two. Plastic looks intact. Needs to be washed. This is the uh, mounting bracket foam stuck to it. This looks surprisingly like a regular C2N. Removing the drive from the housing, there are two screws on the side here towards the back, one on either side. And there are two screws on top under the door. I'll start by removing this cardboard shielding and removing the circuit board. switch right here. Unscrew that. Pull that up. So we got a screw there. That ground wire is riveted. I'm going to have to desolder that. And the record and the erase head are going to have to be desoldered so that I can get this off. I don't want to remove the head assemblies and screw up the alignment. I've taken photos of where the wires are now. Black, white, white, red, ground. So, flip it over here, desolder these. Shock absorbers on here are shot. Looks like I'm going to have to find some replacements. Yikes. Those just totally disintegrated. Now the electronics are separated. Clean this up. These were rubber shock absorber mounts, but it's uh, turned brittle. Things crumbled. That's not going to be easy to find a replacement for. This is the capstan retainer. It's held on with a screw on the side here. And a spring. Oh. There's a little plastic Delrin plate right there that the capstan rides against. This is like a polished dome right here that spins on top of that. And the capstan and flywheel should just drop right out. Eclipse holding pieces on here. Let me pop this Eclipse off. 
carefully. This is the auto stop mechanism. It's held on by a little plastic clip. Lifts right up. Well, we're going to clean all these pieces. This is the record protect mechanism here. Can't push the record button down, and now you can. This little piece of metal here presses in on the record switch on the PCB. This will have to come off in order to remove the whole key assembly. This spring here. Springs are held on by some kind of a rubber cement. Now the keys are held on just by this one screw right here. I can break that screw loose without stripping it out. These have thread locker all over them. Okay, that screw comes out. And the whole thing comes out. There's the keys. I'll put this screw right back in there. So I don't lose it and also so I don't mix it up so that I know that's the right screw. Small plastic bags like this. Help to keep the parts separated so you don't get them mixed up. Next, I want to remove the whole head assembly. I think that's actually pretty simple now that the keys are out of the way. Got one spring holding on here. There's the head assembly. Take this and scrub it in the sink. Try to get off all the dust and the residue, grime, old lubricant. This uh, record protect assembly here, I'm not sure that's going to be able to come off easily. There's some old grease in here that's just dried up and gumming up the works. So this all has to get cleaned out. There's the record notch sensor. Spring here is loose already, so this should just rotate off. And uh, got some delicate parts here. Take up reel, the supply reel. And a gear. These are held on with Eclipse. Careful not to lose those Eclipse. One. Lift. There's a spring under there. This one has a clutch mechanism on it. There's a gear underneath and a should be a felt pad. Okay. The clip. There's a very small washer. There we go. There's it gear underneath. No felt pad on this one. Try to figure out how the clutch oh this is the clutch mechanism here. And a little 
get the you clip off this gear. And there it is, stripped down to everything removed. Oh, well, got one thing left. Be careful not to strip the heads off these screws. Right on there tight. Thread locker on the back is making it really tough to take these out. Okay, that's it. Now, I'm going to bag these parts so that I don't get them lost or mixed up. And I'm going to start cleaning them individually. And we'll start putting it back together. Got all those parts bagged up so I don't lose anything. The head assembly here has this little idler tire that's on a spring. And there's another spring here. I don't want to lose those. I'm going to take those off and bag them. I'm also going to take the pitch roller off so I can clean that. But I don't want to remove the, uh, the erase head or the record head because that will mess up the alignment. But uh, this little bar here is part of the auto stop mechanism. And it's pretty grimy in here. I'm going to need to clean that out good. Take the pinch roller off. E clip a spring. And there's that tire. So I'll bag those. So I don't lose them. Spring still attached. Here's the door lock. Maybe we'll just take this spring off here so it doesn't get lost. That goes in the bag with the other parts from that general area. So this is ready to be cleaned, and this is ready to be cleaned. I've taken these key assemblies apart before, but they really are a pain to get back together, so I don't want to take this one apart. But I am going to get in here and scrub out this old grease and re-lube this. I finished cleaning everything. This is the main plate right here. And I scrubbed this in the sink with soap and water and an old toothbrush. And then I took the Dremel tool with a wire brush to remove corrosion. There's a lot of corrosion spots on there. I noticed this has a, uh, a name and a logo for Musashino, I think is who made this originally. I also finished cleaning all the other parts. And uh, this plastic is old. You want to be very careful with it if you're doing this at home. Clean things uh, very gently so you don't break anything. You also want to be sure to clean the uh, belt path completely, all the pulleys. Uh, there was a lot of old belt residue in here. It took a little bit of scrubbing to get that out. So now I guess we'll start reassembling everything. On the head assembly here, I didn't actually get this wet. I cleaned this with, uh, just cleaned out the area in here with alcohol uh, and a Q-tip to get everything out of there. This is uh, part of the auto stop mechanism that's moving right here. So I'll put the rest of these pieces back on here. Let's see if I can do this first time without parts flying.
like that. You gotta reattach this tire here. This really is kind of difficult to do on camera, but I'm gonna do my best here. Might end up bumping the camera a bit, getting my big head in the, in the way there. See this? Just putting that spring back up there. Keeps wanting to twist around. There. I hope the camera caught that because I don't want to do it again. So that just sits in there like that until it goes back together. And we'll put the door stop hook on there. Come on, I keep bumping that thing. Detent there to keep it aligned. And there's one more spring. It goes right here. Let's take a moment to talk about lubricant. I'm no expert on the subject, but it looks to me like all the residue uh, of the grease that I removed on here was uh, white lithium grease. And I tend to use white lithium grease on metal to metal contact, uh, and I think it's appropriate here. So I'm going to put a little bit of lithium grease on the linkages here. In 30 years or so this will dry up, get sticky and stiff, and it'll be a pain to remove. But in the meantime, should keep the metal parts moving freely. And I'll just go ahead and clean up the excess so it doesn't leave a mess. So there's a bit of movement here. You can see the places where the metal's contacting. So I'm going to apply a little bit of grease here and here on the underside of that plate. On this plate you'll see little dents here, 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 here. And on the reverse side these are uh, nubs, little protrusions. This is where the metal to metal contact is. The spring needs to attach right here, but I don't want to do it because that's going to uh, pull it back. And I'm going to put the keys back on now. Once it goes on, it slides just a little bit to one side. And we can get this screw in. Reattach this screw or this spring. There we go. Play, stop. I'll go ahead and reattach this gear, that tiny little E clip there. And I've got here some super lube. This is a uh, silicone PTFE lubricant, not petroleum based. So it should be safe on plastics. And again, don't take my word for it. I am absolutely no expert on lubricants, whether or not they're safe for plastics. Uh, this is just what I'm using now. Put the gear back on and try to get that E-clip back on there.
When you're picking up an E-clip with a pair of tweezers, you got to be very careful not to grab it by the edge, too close to the edge, and it'll shoot away like a tiddlywink. Try to push it on there. Click. Okay. For these shafts, I'm just going to use some of this oil. Well, I didn't catch it on camera, but I did end up losing the spring briefly. We have this spring here, this E-clip, this small little vinyl washer, and the supply reel. The spring is uh, slightly conical. It's smaller at the top than at the bottom. Spring goes on the bottom. Supply reel. The vinyl washer goes on top and the e-clip on top of that. This is of course very difficult to see. Gonna hold this down against the spring, get the vinyl washer on there. Get the e-clip on there. That line of washer is very difficult to see because it's the same color as the as the reel. So be careful when you're taking it apart you don't lose it. The oil will make it stick to the to the reel there. there. Same thing on the take-up reel. We have the spring. A little vinyl washer, E-clip. There's a gear on this side that mates with this one, so push it down. It may have to uh, twist it a little bit to mate it. Grabbed it. on there. Very difficult to do one-handed. That vinyl washer is still on there. E-clip is in the groove. Pressing. Click. Sorry if I blocked the camera or got in the way. It's just difficult to get these small parts on camera. I'm going to go ahead and put the record protect mechanism back in now. That's on the back side here. Actually, I may have to take the keys out to do this. Hold on a sec. This goes on this way. We have to get those keys out of the way to get it wrapped around. So I took the keys off again because getting this hooked back on there is far easier with the key out of the way when you can pivot this far enough. There. There, that's all put back together. Now I just have to reconnect this spring.
Well, this originally had some rubber cement to hold these springs in place to keep them from coming off. I might try to find something similar. Now we can see the record button won't push down and if we push in here a little bit, it lifts that out of the way, the record button goes down. Try to keep it on camera as much as I can. This is the button, this is the uh, piece that pushes in on the record switch on the PCB when the record button's pressed. This needs to be screwed down right here. There we go. Pressing in on the rewind key should help get you an angle on that screw. Just spring back on here. There's a little detent there to keep it aligned. Now we'll put the uh, idler pulley mechanism back in here. This doesn't have an E-clip. This is held in place by this little clip right here. So First I'm going to lubricate this. A little bit of this right here on the shaft. Put a little bit of lube right here on this. I'll try to get this piece situated in there where it goes. There. Rewind and fast forward. Fast forward engages that gear. Rewind engages the other gear. There's actually not much left to put back in there. This is the uh, auto stop mechanism, but I don't want to put this back on there until I can get the capstan retainer back on. That's going to be after we get the electronics attached. First I'm going to do the erase head. And I took notes when I took it apart. Black wire goes here. White wire goes here. Went ahead and stripped a little more insulation off those wires. And I'm going to use a little bit heavier gauge solder. We've got the uh, record playhead, three wires, white, red, and shield go in those three holes. Oh, so there it is. Not pretty, but not bad. Got the erase head and the record playback head attached there. And unless I'm sorely mistaken, they're right where they were before. White wire, the red and the shield are both connected to ground. I'm gonna reattach this ground wire too. Reattaching the motor is going to be tricky. If you were uh, watching during the disassembly, you'll know that the rubber shock absorbers uh, disintegrated when I took them apart. And that ground wire just broke off from the riveted end there. I'll have to solder that on later. So what I want to do, I'm going to try replacing them with rubber O-rings. I went to the hardware store and got some rubber O-rings that I'm hoping will work. These are 3 millimeter inner diameter and 2 millimeter thick. So I'm going to put one of these O-rings on either side of the brass insert. 
and then uh, try to put it together. Aligning these with the screw holes is a bit of a challenge, so I did that off camera. I've got the bottom O-rings on there, and the screws in, so now I'm just going to put the top O-ring on, put the screw back in. There. It moves around a little bit, but it feels fairly secure. Screws are bottomed out against the brass inserts, but the, uh, the only contact between the motor and the plate is through those O-rings, which dampens the motor vibration. Now I've got the screws for the circuit board here, but we need to be careful. Get those out of the way. This is the record switch here, so this needs to go right in front of that. Screw this down. I'll put a zip tie back on here to strain relief these wires. Oh, all that's left now, I think, is the cap stand, flywheel, cap stand retainer. Go ahead and wrap the belt around here. Actually, we need to. Uh, Put the auto stop mechanism on. So the auto stop mechanism has to go up underneath the cap stand or the flywheel, just like this. And it uh, releases the keys when it comes around. You can put the uh, cap stand retainer on. This goes little hooks on the bottom just goes down and slides to one side. We can screw screw in here. And attach this spring. Lastly, this is the adjustment screw. The idea is you torque down on this to minimize that gap between the retainer and the capstan. You want it to just barely touch so that there's no movement here. Just going to torque it down a little bit more. Check for some movement, just a little bit of movement, a little bit more, no movement. Back it off just slightly. Feels just right. Barely any movement at all. Did a little tweaking here to get these wires out of the way of the record switch so that uh, 
they weren't interfering with this action here. I'm going to go ahead and clean the heads one last time. Go ahead and clean the capstan in case you've got any oils on it. Having out of parts to put back together. Go ahead and put this cardboard shield back on. Make sure that hole lines up. That's for the mounting hole. Sharp viewers might have noticed that when I put this auto stop bar back on here, I forgot to attach the E-clip. So, I noticed that later and went looking for the clip and couldn't find it anywhere. So I had to go back to the hardware store. FYI, this is a 1 8 inch clip. Well, let's see if we can't get it put back together. So there's a couple of screws in the back here, one on this side, one on that side, and then uh, a couple of screws that go in from the front. And these black screws go in the front here. I moved the position of that zip tie, so now let's see if we can put this thing together now. How does this work? There's no interference there. There we go. One screw up front. One screw in the back. There it is, all cleaned up. Let's see if it actually works after all that effort. I'll flip it over and test the auto stop. Should stop automatically when it reaches the end of the tape. That works. Let's see if this will load a program. Something in there is kind of squeaky. Now the program, the tape in there was made on this internal Sanyo recorder. Put a blank tape in there, see if it'll record. Looks like we recorded something. That worked. Let's see if it works in this 
drive. Like it works great. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. I added some grease to all the teeth on these gears here just to make sure that they're well lubed. Uh, but be careful not to get any grease on this vertical surface here or this tire or this uh, take up reel. When you press play, that, uh, this is the drive shaft, transfers to this wheel, to this spindle. Greasing the gear seems to have quieted that noise a bit. However, it doesn't make that noise when there's no tape in there. And it doesn't make that noise with every tape. <laughs>